tax harmonisation, euro bonds and increased EU expenditure to finance investments in research and development, infrastructure and energy projects. This is what is needed in order to ensure the EU's future competitiveness and sustainable growth. Well, that's according to a report that was presented this week in the European Parliament by the Financial, Economic and Social Crisis Committee, a committee that was just set up about a year and a half ago in response to the financial crisis. And the lady who was put in charge of this report is the French socialist MEP, Pervenche Berre. And she's the president of this and she's here today with me to have a coffee and tell us a bit more about the report. Thanks for joining me here today. So first of all, let's talk about the budget issue. I mean, at the moment, um, the EU takes 1% of the, of the GDP of every, every different member state, and now they want to increase this by 5 to 10% by 2020. Tell us a bit more about this, and how do you intend on convincing member states to agree to this? Well, obviously, it's difficult to, because member states today, they look at their own uh, task, and they see how it's difficult to fix their own budget. So it's very difficult to explain to them that the added value of the EU should be financed. But if you look... Because they don't have the money, where are they going to get well, the money? Well, they say they don't have the money. But we say, well, come on, look. If you create tomorrow a financial transaction tax, this means that each time uh, someone who is playing with the market, like with a Game Boy, uh, is going to move its money from one place to the other just to earn money. Well, you have to tax him for a very small amount. But this would allow us to collect a lot of money. And though, then you would have own resources to finance the need, f what you need to finance at the EU level. And for example, look at uh, in the energy field. It's obvious that tomorrow for each of our citizens, it's important to have access to energy. And we know it's not so easy because we buy energy from Russia or from Algeria or maybe someone have some petrol in, in, in the uh, North Sea, but this is not going to go forever. And so if we don't have link between our energy grids, well, we can have problems tomorrow. But how can you negotiate now with member states, I mean, with, their, with all these austerity measures they're, they're, um, they're introducing and all this kind of social movement as well that's taking place? I mean, what about this resistance? Are you not afraid of a big kind of social movement in not just Spain and Greece, but all over the EU? Well, what are these social movements telling us? They are telling us that people cannot accept a situation where it's the people, the ordinary people, uh, that are going to pay for the mistake that were done by uh, the people in the financial market who are still paying themselves huge bonuses when the people are, 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 are out of work and uh, with social security, uh, safety net that are fragilized and so on. And that's the big issue here because it is, it's the taxpayers that are paying for this, this crisis. Exactly. And how can you, with this report and with all your research, I mean, you've been working on this for years. You've been an MEP here for years. So you've, you've, you've probably seen as well the crisis coming. Yeah, of course we could see the crisis coming because what we have called this casino economy, uh, I remember some of your colleagues from uh, another uh, radio, uh, when I had, I had an interview with them and they were telling me, but how come now everything that you have been saying would arrive is arriving? Yes, I'm, but uh, it doesn't help anything to solve. Now, we have a concrete issue today. Is more austerity for everybody gone to make sure that tomorrow they have, there's a future for our children. This is not true. Of course, member states have to, be, to behave better vis-à-vis -vis their budget. You cannot over indebt yourself. But if you don't cre create growth, you cannot reimburse your debt. You will get always, always in a worse situation. So you need to allow for investment, for jobs, and for a new um, a new growth model that is more sustainable. Okay, and this week when you presented the report, I was at the briefing and the kind of sentiment there was, we need more Europe. Mm. How can you explain that to European citizens, for example, who have just left their job and they're just emigrated to Melbourne, for example, with their family? You're saying to them, we need you, we need more Europe. So yep. what do you mean by that? No, and we need to invest for you. This is what we are saying. And we're saying there's no... Uh, great European and lazy one. Huh? And if you don't have... One of the reasons why we created Europe is to be stronger together. And are we not today inside the Europe 
and vis-a-vis -vis China, India, even the US, in an even greater need for more solidarity to be strong together. Who can believe that in the modern world, anybody is going to save its own country alone? This is not true, nor for UK, nor for Germany, nor for France. We can do it only if we are solidar among us. The problem is that all our manufacturing is going over to China and India and Brazil. I mean, we need something to kickstart Europe and our economy. Yeah, but this is also something that is very challenging. Also, when I debate it with my British colleague, very often we have a strong debate here. And the report we have just voted, and I hope will be voted in the plenary, we are asking for a balance, free and fair trade. And this is very important because if you have a fair trade, this means you also integrate in your reciprocity approach to trade, a social and environmental standard. And I think it's time to discuss this. Okay, thank you very much for having coffee with me. We'll keep an eye on that report. It will be voted in July here in thank the Parliament. Thank you for the coffee. <laughs> thank you. And then we'll see if it gets through the Member States and Council.